Hey everyone, welcome. This is something I don't normally do, but I might consider start doing this because I'm having a lot of fun meeting a lot of really cool entrepreneurs, business owners, and those that are just out doing really cool things. And uh, Joseph Ally, who I have with me, who I'm going to introduce to you in a moment, reached out to me a handful of weeks ago and shared with me his discussions on his channel that he was doing on Neville Goddard's book. So that's essentially what his channel is about. Manifesting reality, creating reality, subconscious mind, Neville Goddard based stuff, and more importantly, his own personal experiences. So when he reached out to me and said, you know, let's connect and whatever, I checked out his channel and I just couldn't stop watching the videos. They were really profound and powerful and really helped me dimensionalize personally a lot of things that I talk about when it comes to subconscious mind and creating reality. And, you know, recently I did that video on Yogananda's book. Uh, it's not really his book, but an article on materializing your dreams. So this conversation, first of all, I'm going to introduce Joseph, is going to be about his process, his ways. We're going to keep it really dynamic. I don't have a script. I don't really uh, allow, allow my subconscious mind to flow. So Joseph does the same thing. And what's going to come out of this is a very natural expression of how both him and I work on creating reality using the various dynamics of Neville Goddard's subconscious mind and a very free-flowing uh, nature. What we have today is a privilege to have Joseph on here because of all his experience working on this himself. So a lot of the results that he shares are based on his own personal experience of working with this stuff and his clients. His channel has grown really fast and is continuously growing. And it's because he's putting out really good content and he expresses himself really well. He's very good at articulating it in a process-oriented way. So he doesn't, it's not nebulous and all over the place. He explains it in a very action-oriented way. And those, if you go on his channel and look at his uh, subscriber comments, you'll see people are getting results. They're really valuing the way he teaches it. So he teaches this stuff really well. So first of all, I'd like to introduce everybody to Joseph Ally. Thank you, Joseph. That was a, an awesome introduction. Um, and you know, I, the reason that I reached out to you in the first place was because of years ago, I was um, checking your channel out during a period of growth and I saw a, um, a mind map and a, a, a summary that you did on the power of the subconscious mind by Joseph Murphy. And that helped me out a lot in that time. And, um, but yeah, I'm super excited for this and, um, yeah, thank you so much for having me on your channel. Yes. Uh, you're welcome. It's a pleasure. And thanks for also stimulating the idea of having this because I've been putting out more videos and I've been looking at better ways and more evolved, not evolved, but more ways of delivering this information. And I think interviews and having a very laid back discussion is one of the best ways of dimensionalizing the stuff that I talk about as well as the stuff that you talk about in your channel. So I want to start uh, by talking about subconscious mind. So personally, I've had a lot of really profound and powerful experiences working with reprogramming my subconscious mind. I created a whole training on it. I made multiple videos on it and it's all based on my experience. And it started out in 2004 when I was in $50,000 debt, got Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. And, and by the way, we're going to put links in the bottom to Joseph's channel. I recommend you check out his channel and really, you know, he's going to share as much as he can on this call, but there's a lot that he put out tons of content. How many videos did he put out so far? Probably like 80 or 90, I, I think. In yeah. the span of what? Maybe like four months. That's amazing. So you're really committed to this and you are getting a lot of insights and you're very deep in reflection on this, right? Oh, yes, very much so. You know, and, and as am I because of all this experience. And so I share a lot. And then when I come across content where somebody shares their experience, I can, I can see the connects because I know this stuff works for me. And then the way you explain it is very unique. So subconscious mind stuff, what are your, what's your views? Let's start like at a really high level. What, anything that comes to you about subconscious mind, uh, what is a high level overview of what you've discovered of the power of the subconscious mind? Yeah. Um, I, my, I first started with Think and Grow Rich as well. That was in 2009 when, and, uh, Napoleon Hill talks about auto suggestion and, um, I was just trying to get a business off the ground that had been my dream. And so I, I saw this, the, the auto suggestion and I was, it, it didn't really make sense to me because I was wondering how this can actually allow me to get rich. And, but what I found is very interesting and it was just through like a little bit of testing, 
like what I thought was that if I were to do something with my subconscious mind, like say I was to say I am rich or something, then I would my attention would be drawn to things that would remind me of that. But what I began to find out is that it wasn't just my attention that was drawn to that. It was things were also taking shape in the physical reality to match and then I would change. So it was like this global transformation of not only myself but things on the exterior world and that's when I started to question what is going what is actually going on here, you know? Yes, and that's very deep and I want to go a little deeper into that. So I believe that the external world is a materialization of what's going on within. And you are communicating and saying that that's the same thing for you. One of the things that I found with individuals who work with this kind of information is they start to they start on this journey where we're very reactive to the external world. And you know, some will call this being asleep or not being as high of consciousness and so forth. And then what happens, interestingly enough, is we start to come across information like this on the power of the subconscious mind and so forth, like through various ways. Like for me, it was Think and Grow Rich. And some people get it through a spiritual journeys. Some people get it through different kinds of success principles and so forth. But they tap into this knowledge and they start doing things like auto-suggestion and whatnot. And then the, the external world changes a lot, oftentimes in ways that we never thought possible. Like, for example, and I want you to talk about this too because you're very good at explaining this. What I realized about this journey is in the start, I wanted to just create wealth for myself. I wanted to get out of the $50,000 debt and so forth. But I didn't really know how. Now, so the very first knee-jerk reaction based on what I was taught is if you're going to learn this stuff, go get some books on it, go get some seminars and trainings and so forth, and, and th th away you go. So interestingly enough, what I found is that the way it materialized that I paid out my debt, the way it materialized that all the things have been created from my subconscious mind, uh, reprogramming efforts of using auto suggestions and stuff in Think and Grow Rich, were beyond what I thought was possible as far as my learning goes. A lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of times, but even better. So I call this spirit of harmony. You know what I'm talking about? So yeah. does the subconscious mind then, and I believe it does, have access to all kinds of information that we've accumulated plus something beyond this and this is where like the bible and neville goddard gets into this like the really mystical stuff and yogananda talks about this that we have access to that if we only kind of get out of our biases of always trying to consciously work hard to do it and just release and let go the subconscious mind actually goes and figures it all out and materializes it in ways like reality materializes in a way that is beyond what we expected. Now, is this something that you experience? And, and, and can you speak a little bit more to that if it's true? Yeah, absolutely. So as far as what you said in the beginning of this was that everything and everyone in this world is essentially a materialization of the subconscious. That's what I believe. And what I have found is it, exactly what you said. And that when I impress my subconscious mind in some way, which essentially just means getting something across into my subconscious, then what materializes is beyond, generally beyond my capability of understanding. And so I do actually believe that it's not, it, there's some infinite intelligence far beyond the scope of what I'm capable of comprehending um, to a massive degree to which events will transpire in a perfect way better than I could have consciously to see, uh, conceived. And it will come to me in a way in which is easy and effortless in most cases. Or I will be prompted to move in a perfect, exact way to meet my manifestation halfway to receive it. And, um, and it's like the first, one of the, my first uh, manifestations, so to speak, was I was imagining I was freaked out because of school. Um, I was in college. I, I had a class. I did not do an assignment. But I had been listening to a hypnosis tape. This is when I first got into this. And I had imagined that I would not have class. And so that's something far outside of myself. That has nothing to do with me in worldly terms, and in regular terms. But yet when I approached the college, the class was closed miraculously. Last minute the professor had to go somewhere 
And so it's exactly as you said, there was nothing I could have conceived. Yes, I could have planned this, but as you said, it seems the more that I have a grip on what it is that I want to do, the less capability I allow, it seems to be the word, for things to come to me in an easy and effortless way. But it does seem to be miraculous. That's been my experience. Um, so yeah, totally. Now that's very deep. Okay, so I've, I've been really into this stuff. And one of the things is that I can verify for that is the more I release the grip, the easier I'm able to come up with ideas, the more creative I am, the more natural I am, the more I tend to attract people's circumstances and opportunities. And the key of one of the things that really attracted me to your videos is that you test everything, right? So I've tested this and I continue to evolve in this. And, you know, this really took me to the next level of looking into this after I had created uh, the subconscious mind training that I did last year, which by the way, I use it. So this is the thing, like all my trainings and everything that we teach or we talk about, we use it because uh, it's, first of all, it works. And second of all, uh, it's, it's also something that is an ongoing thing because the subconscious mind training, I use it on a daily basis. I record my audios and I don't necessarily record and play my audios on a daily basis. But I do use the process. And so my thing is I kind of just go about, I call it navigating reality. So I just kind of go about the world navigating reality. And I have my vision board of what I want to create. And we'll talk more about that in a moment. And I get all these insights, right? Like I'll get some kind of limiting belief that shows up or fear-based thing that shows up. And I didn't do it as mindfully back then as I'm doing it right now. But when I note these things down, I use subconscious mind audios and affirmations to change that programming. So let's say I was walking down the street, right? And then I saw somebody and for some reason I had like a little bit of anger towards them. Maybe they were, they were saying something and I kind of judged them or something like that. I will write that down because to me, that's not like a positive emotion because I believe that when, and, and feel free to chime in on this because I'm free flowing here. I believe that if I put out an intent on somebody and I, and I judge them in a negative way, then I'm actually giving more energy to that. And I'm creating them that way. I'm disservicing them and I'm disservicing myself. I'm actually saying that yeah. that exists within me. So yeah. my thing is outer world's a reflection of the inner world. We materialize the world based on within and that's giving me a clue. So I write that down and then I create an affirmative statement. Like I'm so happy and grateful that when I walk uh, down the street, I see so many joyous and happy people. I uplift spirits. I bring good energy and stuff like that. I'll just go through the whole process and then I'll play it to myself over and over again. And then the next day I'll notice as I walk down the street, that won't happen again. Yep. And then what I'll do is I'll honor that, right? I'll say, oh, wow, it's working. It's helping me. It's, uh, this is, I'm, I'm seeing the world more positive and so forth. And then it's like, it doesn't happen again. Yep. So, it's like a feedback loop. It's like, so I, I, I totally 100% understand what you're saying. And it's, so the reactiveness of, so for instance, if you had not addressed that, that anxiety or that anger that came upon you and then you emotionally reacted, my experience is that it would perpetuate over and over. You would continuously create people or that you would encounter people which had that same demeanor. Whereas instead, and I do, um, I do it in a slightly different way, my technique, but we have the same outcome. I will imagine something different. I will imagine me or myself having a conversation with someone explaining, yes, um, you know, everyone that I see is joyous and happy and I will receive the same outcome as you. And then the, when I do encounter that this doesn't unfold, that I do see people that are joyous, I mean, if I react in the same way that you describe, it will plant another seed and perpetuate that and grow. And then it will just go from one seeing one person as joyous to continuously on and onward until it, that's just my reality. So I think that's what you're talking about. Yes. Amazing. And so I want you to talk a little bit more because you brought up imagination. And let's get a little deeper into that. So you do an imagination process, which is similar to mine. So how, what's your process then? Do you have like a kind of a process? If someone said, if someone came up to you and said, I've got that thing that Joseph has, or I've got an insecurity, I've got this, I got whatever it is, uh, what would you, what would you say to them as your process? Yeah. So I do have a, like a, a system that I use that I've kind of, cause that, that's kind of what I, that's, that was my whole goal because I can't not know. So it's, how do I take this and quantify it? So 
my goal is because you have a or, systems or, background, right? A computer software background. Like I got an IT so, background, yeah, so we're very like yeah. structured and logical, and we want everything sequential, which is great exactly. because then it makes it step by step. Yes. So please continue. That, that's exactly right. Um, so what I would do then is I would first, like, first I need to know what the problem is. What's the problem, or what do I want, or in the case of the me not wanting to see the the people that are angry and me me emotionally reacting, that's the problem. And then what I'll do is I will find my definite chief aim. And I do this for whatever it is that I am after. And I'll take that and I will define a short, concise scene which implies that I am already the person that I want to be. So in this case, someone who only sees happy and joyous people and interacts with happy and joyous people. And then there, so there's many different methods from that point on, but with the imagination, specifically using my imagination, I will get into a relaxed state and I'll try to drop my current self, that self that is reactive, and I will embody in first person point of view a character that would be essentially, so when I plan this out, it would be a conversation between me and say you. I always choose someone that I trust and this works not just with encountering people but anything or anyone, whatever I want. So I would have you in my imagination tell me, like, dude, you seem to only encounter joyous, happy people. And then I would reaffirm it and respond to you and agree and say, yes, I know. I only see happy and joyous people, and it's awesome. And if I can do that and get a clear and in first-person point of view as if I'm replicating this experience right now, then it will impress in my subconscious mind and shortly thereafter in some unknown period, but usually shortly thereafter will manifest and that's what will appear in my life. That's amazing. So a couple of key points that we share in that in your process in mind is there is the visualization piece. So I do that with my affirmations and I say visualize yourself doing it. So you feel the emotions of this well-being feeling. And because you're very heavily influenced by Neville Goddard, it's kind of how he does it with assuming, uh, assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled. Yeah. That's the most important thing. Impressing the subconscious mind is visual and feeling. It's not just a matter of just seeing statements. Would you agree? That's correct. Yeah. So now I want to share some interesting uh, experiences working with this. And I also would like you to share some interesting experiences and then we'll get into further discussion. So number one is vision board, right? So I don't know if I've shared this on my channel. Maybe I've shared this in my subconscious mind training or something like that. I can't remember. But I, I use this stuff to create my reality. And I'm doing stuff. Like I'm, on, I'm an entrepreneur. And that's my story. Like my thing is like we, we talked about this the other day. It's like my way of creating wealth and abundance is through entrepreneurship. It's not the only way. I mean someone can give you – like you can manifest somebody giving you whatever resources you want. That's possible. And yeah. I've become more open to that now whereas before I would have more of a bias is – it's through entrepreneurship or it's through working hard. And as a result, I've been more open to it. I've been getting whatever it is through the most unexpected ways, through like people offering it to me, through it showing up. It's all kinds of interesting ways, which then like totally blew my mind, right, to next level. And it, it, it allowed me to become more open-minded. So then I started to embrace subconscious mind programming on becoming more open-minded. So one of my things is always seeking to understand people's point of view and and removing the kind of judgment and stuff and it was a great exercise so i believe that one of my things is in order to manifest greater magnitudes in easier faster ways is to keep an open mind and you can you can feel how open you are by how you look at others and how you look at reality and how opening and embracing and doesn't necessarily mean you have to agree with their perspective but as long as you seek to understand as stephen r covey said in seven habits okay so that's one thing that's really powerful now, the reason I bring that up is for a vision board. Okay, so this is what happened. A few years ago, 2017, I got out of a, a, a very serious relationship around 2016. And I realized there was a lot of things that I was recreating over and over again in relationships. So it was in my subconscious. So I said, if I wanted to have a really good relationship, the relationship of my dreams, I have to clear the stuff out. So I went on this journey, right, to, to evolve myself within and stuff like that. And it was a very amazing journey. It took me to India to go and hang out with my grandmother and stuff who who was a huge influence in my life, and, and she still is. And so this is, this is something where I did a lot of work. And then what ended up happening is I got the hunch to create a vision board. And so I created a vision board of what I want, the next phase of my life. And relationship was one of them. 
So I went on the internet and I searched, you know, attractive women because I, I don't really have a type per se. It's just how I feel and if the chemistry is there and stuff like that. And there's like I have a list of, of criteria of what I look for in a partner. But as far as how she exactly looks, it's not really something that I put in consideration. But I also want to say that this does work to make it like that because it happened like that. So I took an image from the internet and I put it on my vision board and I would keep visualizing, visualizing, visualizing. And interesting enough, I met my girlfriend uh, last year in the summer, right before I was creating my subconscious mind training. And she looks exactly like the woman in the picture. <laughs> and I was like, I didn't even, it was funny because I didn't even realize it until her and I talk about this stuff. So we're like amazing match and everything is so harmonious, which goes to show you the power of how you can attract the ideal person. And I want you to talk more about this. So let's, let's keep me a, keep a mental note of that. So yeah. she came into my life. We have this amazing relationship. We continuously grow and evolve. And then I thought about the vision board. I go look at the vision board, which was a PDF file on my computer. And I showed it to her. I'm like, look, you look like the woman on, on this picture. And she started laughing and stuff. So um, I've got a couple of theories that I want to share with you on, on why I believe this works. Okay. And I want you to talk more about this. So first of all, I believe we materialize the world based on how we believe reality to work within. And some way, some way somehow it ends up uh, becoming so if you're open to it and you believe in it. I also believe that when you clear yourself up within of fear, doubt, indecision, hatred, jealousy, anger, all those negative emotions, in your subconscious mind, it's like you connect to a deeper part of you, your soul. And then your soul guides you to create that vision board. Like the soul literally tells you and guides you in some interesting ways of showing you how to reprogram your subconscious mind. So I created the vision board based on my soul's guidance. I believe this. And those things in there were going in and, and reprogramming my subconscious mind, which is in this reality that we're in, right? The neurology and all this kind of stuff to make it so. So now based on that, what, what, do, you, what's, what do you take on that and how did that work and what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, um, interesting. So as far as the manifestation of a of a person, it's interesting because um, I've actually done that. I've done that myself. I did not, but I did not write a vision board. I wrote down a list of 120 character traits. But the the interesting part about this was that I didn't imagine them. I didn't feel them. I just was. I had gone through a breakup, and I said this. I need to figure out what I'm going to do next. And I wrote 120 different traits down, closed it up, put it on the bookshelf, and then a woman appears out of the blue two months later. Oh, it was as if she was reading from my personal journal and, and describing herself. So it's it's insanely um, powerful these um, these techniques. And then, but as far as I do believe that we are we essentially. With all of the stuff that we learn, all the things we go through, um, any type of resentment, fear, doubt, jealousy, anger, anything like that that's within, I do believe that that blocks us essentially. It makes it, – it's like I'm heavier or there's more attached to me. And so I went through a, a very similar process as a matter of fact um, and I essentially constructed a list of all the people that I had harmed, all the people that had harmed me. Um, anything I had resentment against, fear, and I uh, revised each of those scenes in my imagination. So, which technically means that I brought the painful scene in my imagination and then modified it to fit a different conception, which was not painful and that would have been beneficial for whoever was involved. And after that happened, after I did that, and this, I, it didn't, I mean, it took me a couple weeks to write this list out, but to imagine it took me a total of like an hour to hit each and every aspect on that list. But it seemed after that point that everything was kind of split wide open. And when I say that, I just mean things were manifesting instantly. I was experiencing a very interesting aspect of reality that I never experienced before. Something that I wasn't used to because I no longer had those things inside of me that, that were manifesting automatically. And so I do believe that if we clear out the wreckage of the past essentially or yes. just empty ourselves almost that we are automatically then we have a deeper connection with something automatic that is life word and that will then automatically kind of drive us towards experiencing things like this now you know which is what you experience so here's another like layer of how um 
multidimensional this universe is that we've come to realize through this journey is I was doing a lot of clearing stuff like they're doing within. Then I found uh, this picture, which I resonated with. I'm like, this is the woman. My subconscious mind went and did his work. I just kept visualizing and looking at my vision board and, and, and being really happy about it. She materialized. And then on the flip side, her and I had this, such a deep connection. We talk about this kind of stuff all the time. Like we are so, you know, deep into this stuff. And she was doing the same kind of stuff. And she materialized me. And it was like, she was like, I, you are exactly, and I always say this to her, I'm like, I painted you. I, I swear I painted you. And she's like, I swear I painted you. And we, the, our connection is so deep and like, it's so like trippy that it literally blows away everything I've ever learned about dating, relationships, and everything. And then I'm like, the quote that really reflects to me when I think about this is the quote from the Bible. Jesus, one of favorite, uh, favorite quotes, or famous quotes, is, as you believe, so it shall be done unto you. Yep. Now, what we're doing is we're programming the subconscious mind to have faith, to believe, to realize that we have within us all these abundance elements that is actually ours. And all we got to do is remove fears, doubts, indecision, all those negative emotions and stuff like that. And then it becomes clear to us. And then we have faith, subconscious mind. And I believe it's connected to infinite intelligence. We can talk about it in a moment too. I've got some theories and stuff. It's interesting because as I continue with this information, I get a clearer, deeper understanding of how this works. And I have deeper of a connection uh, within and I pull my information from within uh, whereas before I would kind of look to the external for the answers and so it, then it goes into this as you believe so it shall be done unto you you tap into more empowering beliefs within and you don't look at statistics and stuff like that exactly and then all of a sudden you materialize it and you behave that way it's so it's so interesting how aligned it is like that so mm -hmm. what what do you have to say about that like what is your experiences with that as far as um, as far as aligning with like when you can you rephrase the, the question in a short way? So the as you believe, so it shall be yeah. done to you yeah. is something that is I believe conscious and and subconscious, mainly subconscious as you believe. So we are believing that all things are possible. So all things are possible to him that believe it. So we're yes. believing it. And yes. removing any kinds of doubts and fears yes. that it's not possible, then yes. our soul gives us. At least this is how I see it. The soul gives yeah. us what we what is actually ours, and what it what is actually win win win. I call it spirit of harmony. Win for yeah. me. Okay. Win, let's use relationship. Win for me. Win yeah. for her. And win for everyone because I can share this experience. Everybody yeah. benefits from it. So it's yeah. ne there's never a taking energy. Yeah. And then as a result of it, the materializations happen faster in the most like far out ways that have never been written it's like it's not like i read a relationship book that said this is how you materialize a relationship yeah so yeah yeah no totally okay so so i do believe so and it has to do with what you're saying as far as the information begins to come from within opposed to our our frontal cortex right our our, our memory of what we learned in in school or whatever um i believe that our desires eventually that pop up are like pure or something yeah. or so it's from there yes pure and so and it's kind of as you phrased it which is that when it comes up it's already mine so imagine it at that moment or feel it as that moment and then it comes in 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 perfect order and um yeah i've experienced things like that a lot where you you, you kind of wonder well initially it's like it's so perfect and it's like why did that desire come up because the outcome was so perfect as if it's supposed to be this way or something. So, um, but it definitely, as I believe, um, be it done unto you, it, 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 everything ends up, I, I think in the end of the day, after clearing out what I, I just call it wreckage, but anything that's blocking me, um, that the belief inside is exactly what will manifest. And I believe that as we remove it as well, it manifests in quicker, faster, easier ways as well. and that's what i experience now it's to where i began from where i began to now the the rate at which manifestations unfold and is it because of my faith because this has happened in a systematic way over and over that it happens faster yeah. i'm not sure but it does yeah so you there's a, do you believe there's a direct correlation between removing negativity 
and then manifesting your dreams and manifesting your desires and the, the speed and unique creative ways that it manifests for you. Yes, and, and I think a lot of it has to do with the removal of the stuff. Yeah, well, the removal of the thought processes that weigh me down. I don't spend a lot of time anymore doing things that are um, or, or, or worrying, I could say. If, yes. if I want something, I kind of preemptively imagine for the future for the future, I guess you could say. And then, so all different times, things just, I'm just navigating kind of how you mentioned um, uh, and, and when we spoke last time, it's like navigating naturally to receive things, the, the things that are alive inside of me. Yes, and you know what's really cool about this is this is fun. Like, you know, I don't profess to know everything. You, did, you, you don't profess to know anything. Right. Um, we're like children. This is, this is like we, we, we were like born again. And maybe this is what it means to be born again into the spirit maybe. or whatever. But yeah. like the, the thing is that my, my childlike curiosity for reality, it's, it's gone into like a magical state. Because I, I can so relate. Sorry, go on. And so we learn more and more. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of channels where people talk about this stuff. We live in a beautiful time because more and more people are talking about this openly now, that this exists and this ability is there and sharing their experiences. And, and there's no, like, one way to do it. I don't believe my way is the best. We talked about this. You don't believe it's our way, and this is my way. It's our way. We do what works for us, and we share, and then we kind of look for commonalities. And, you know, yes. Earl Nightingale said this really well on Strangest Secret. He says, oh, no, all prophets and philosophers or whatever disagreed upon everything except one thing, that you become what you think about. Like, that was the one thing. And in, in pretty much like anyone I can have a conversation with, there's that golden thread that lies in all philosophies, yep. and that is that you become what you think about. Yep. And then, that's no different than true. as you believe, so it shall be done unto you, right? Same thing. Same exact thing. And that, that, that is the common thread. And, and uh, yeah, absolutely. So let's go a little deeper into this then because, you know, this is important. Uh, so then as you believe, so it shall be done unto you. Uh, you become what you think about. Uh, reality is a reflection of what is within. And you can keep going deeper and deeper in this. So can you imagine... What if reality 100% is a materialization of like absolutely within? And how far can you take this? So I started experimenting with this. I started to become more conscious on how, because we're already aware of it right now. Like everybody on my channel and everybody on your channel. And, and by the way, I'm also doing a, uh, a collab on his channel where I'm, for my audience, where I'm doing a mind map breakdown of all his stuff because I really like how he dimensionalizes and articulates. So I'm doing that for, as a service for his audience. And you know, go over to his channel and check out this video. I'll put a link in the description. But it's literally a mind map breakdown of his stuff and his process. Uh, and I'm going to have a lot of fun doing that because... I'm excited for that. You have peppered in all your videos, like all these nuggets that a person can take and, and create their own process. You know, Because it's like there's a way. And I believe each... Everybody kind of find, finds it their own way. You know, that's one of the things. But let's go deeper into this like materialization thing, right? So I started to experiment with... Uh, what happens if I become even more conscious of the kind of information that I take in? So I, I'm really aware on you know, social media. I don't watch TV. Even when I'm out and about in environments where I'm going, who I'm associating with, all this kind of stuff, everything feeds your subconscious. And it's not just like words. It's feelings. It's taste. It's touch. It's all sensory input. So all the sensory input goes into the subconscious mind, and the subconscious mind then recreates based on it. So then you can be conscious on the kind of stimulus that you take in and then you literally recreate it. So I said, how far can I take this? And I started taking it really far to the point where like materialization started to become really, really trippy and like all kinds of very interesting things started to happen. If I said some of the things that happened, like it, like, it would be so far out. Yeah. And, and yeah. My, my goal with this, this channel was not to get far out with this stuff. It's not yeah. my, it's not my intent. It's more of helping people create their dreams through entrepreneurship yeah. and to realize that there's many ways of going about doing things. And so yeah. what I've realized is that as far as business building goes and creating success in business and entrepreneurship goes, you can do it from a place of joy, happiness, bliss, spirit of harmony. You can create products and services and you can do things for others that they will embrace. You'll literally materialize the people that want to buy your stuff and they'll show up and they're so excited and they're... And they're like, I was waiting for you to come up with something like this. Like the kind of statements that I get is so mind blowing. I'm having so much fun. And all of it is a net result of what I'm feeding my subconscious mind, which is everything, all things are possible to him that believeth. 
Number one, I feed that. Number two is that everything in reality is revealing to me about myself. So if I feel tension and anger towards anything, I have to evolve myself within. Yes. Number three, I can have whatever I want, whenever I want, however I want, with joy, bliss, and ease in the spirit of harmony. And I know that as, um, as long as I don't try to take away from someone, the universe is actually on my side. So my thing was this. It's like, if I'm making it win for me, win for the other person, and win for divine or infinite intelligence, it's like, boom, all of a sudden, the power is given to me and it materializes because I tapped into it. So that has been the extent of my experience of taking it to next level, next level, next level. And I noticed like my relationships, my coaching experiences with clients, my consulting, uh, financial, all kinds of things are just accelerating really, really fast. And how I am as a person when I'm around people, I'm a lot more pleasant and so forth. Are you doing something similar to that? It's, 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 it's interesting because the way that I used, so my whole goal always was just to have a business. That's just what I knew. That's what I wanted. But the way that I went about it before now was through brute force and deliberate action and forceful, whatever, like yeah. any descriptive words that can describe like strangling this thing. And, um, but when I, and, and so there were many failures. Now there was a lot of imagining. There was a lot of um, uh, affirmations. There was a lot of planning, but to release the grip was something that I was incapable of doing because I'm a very deliberate, forceful person by nature, which I have um, worked on what, greatly. But are I you think Myers, Myers Briggs? You know, I I like Myers Briggs, and I don't all attach to labels. And we can talk about that later. And maybe on another. Maybe you can come on multiple times in this channel. But what is your personality on Myers Briggs? I, I forget the the letters, but I know I took this online test and I'm the campaigner. So go figure. I just can't okay. stop speaking about this stuff. Um, <laughs> yes. I'll figure. I'll I'll find that out for you though. So I please will. please continue. You said you you went about things in a tense way. So so very very forceful way and 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 there were many failures. Now along the way though, the 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 interesting thing is is that I had been imagining, and this was one of the things that took the longest to to come about to materialize. But eventually, like, so this is actually what happened. I ended up um, loosening my grip on that for a short time and then on, on building a business and then focusing on something else. Yes. And that was when in a miraculous way that I did not lift a finger, this whole business materialized out of thin air to the point where it wasn't that I like I didn't want to make a YouTube channel. I didn't want to do coaching sessions. I didn't want to teach this stuff in in this way. Not even that I didn't want to, but I didn't conjure that conscious idea. But when I released and relinquished my grip on what I wanted, what I wanted, I got probably 10 times better in an easy, effortless way. And so now I I have been basically handed a platter of my dreams, but better than I could have contemplated my dreams. And, um, and so, but it, it, it came, but it also came when I was deeply committed to this, what we're talking about and really putting it to the test and purifying myself, I guess you could say by mm -hmm. work, clearing out all these things and, and in a perfect miraculous way in perfect timing with a bridge of incidents that I could have never consciously conceived all the pieces came together in a miraculous way and my business unfolded and is just as you described people love it I love it I'm having a tremendously amazing time doing this and I'm excited for what's coming next and I have an idea of what's coming next because I've impressed so many different things on the subconscious mind but I'm not exactly sure the way that it's gonna happen you know, and that's such a beautiful thing, too, because uh, what ends up happening and working with this stuff, too, more so, because I come from that background, too, kind of very forceful. I mean, I just wanted to make money. I just didn't like being broke. I just didn't like, I wanted, I just wanted it. And so what did I do? Force, force, force. It did work, because as you believe, so it shall be done unto you, because I knew I was gonna, it was going to happen, and it happened that way. So it does work. And then I, then I started coming, going, uh, you know, more deeper into this kind of information. And then I realized that what if I try uh, some of this more of this, like a relaxed thing? Um, I had such a strong grip on the bias of, no, I have to be, be forcefully doing that. It was, it, was a, it was a lot of internal work I had to do to release that grip. I didn't realize how strong of a grip that was. And then when I started to materialize and see the results happen, if I look at it from a certain frame, I'm still creating value. I'm still like, there's a lot of things I'm involved with. I do stuff in this channel. I'm doing other business stuff. 
I do stuff that is outside of the scope of, you know, business education and stuff like real, like, you know, not, not to say one's real versus the other, but like stuff like involved with commerce and, and all kinds of things like that. And the same philosophies apply. The only difference is that uh, I materialize things faster, results happen, problems solve faster. I have way more fun. And as a result, my output, because I track my time, I do all these things and I'm big on that. My output as far as service, uh, creativity, process, results, all those kind of things that create value in the world has gone up and the, the, the harvest from that has gone up. And so I'm noticing that it's not about working more, but it's about working smarter. And what does really yeah. smarter mean? I think rather than overthinking it, allow your subconscious mind to determine what smarter means. So that's the, that's the power of, uh, as you believe, so it shall be done unto you because I've talked to many entrepreneurs. I love meeting entrepreneurs. I've met entrepreneurs who don't have a lot of knowledge. They don't take a lot of courses, seminars. They don't buy a lot of books and stuff, yet they created a lot of business success. And then I've met a lot of entrepreneurs who have a lot of information. Like they'll be able to tell you like how this works and marketing campaign and stuff, but they don't have the results. And I'm, I was looking for differentiating factors. And I noticed that uh, one of them was more about believing and having faith that it would work out whereas the other one would get lost in the information. And they were also very gripping, like they were trying so hard. And they believed that it was a, a very kind of stressful and arduous journey. And so they were creating it to be so, and they were materializing it. So likewise, I've also met successful entrepreneurs who do it kind of a joy, bliss, ease kind of way, like how we do it. And I've also met, well, now I do it this way. And I met entrepreneurs who do it kind of like really, really hard work doing it. To each their own is, is our view on it. Like, I'm not saying one way is better. What we are saying is you become what you think about and as you believe so it shall be done unto you and when you keep an open mind you uh, allow it to be in a way whatever you want and so this is a and i'm seeing this as a direct correlation i've gotten to the point right now where i can literally hear somebody as they're communicating with me and i can translate to see uh, how easy they manifest and create in reality the results versus the difficulty they have just by the words they use and the tension and the energy and so forth. Are you, are you sensing that? Cause you coach and you, oh, yeah. you help others, right? Is that one of your things that you do? Absolutely. You just get a feel for it. You talk to enough people and, um, yeah, exactly. And you're right. It's the ease and effortlessness that, um, I mean, but first of all, you're right. If you believe that hard work is going to get you what you want, then it will. Yes. I haven't, so, but the interesting part is it made me think of something while you were saying that. I created, so, so I call them assumptions, like a blueprint that plays in my mind, right? Like a belief. So I created a belief recently where every hour that I cut down of work, I will increase my revenue by such and such percent. And so oh, it's like interesting. That. It's, and That's it's a fun working. one. <laughs> it's working. It's working. So it now now the fun comes from figuring out the way to automate more and make things um, make things happen. And yeah, you get you get my point. To cut down my time to make more money. That's, That's the goal now. You see, that's interesting. You you talk about something really profound that you hit on right here, and we're and to dimensionalize. It's not about working harder. It's about working more creative, smarter. Because the truth is this: there are those that earn. Uh, a couple hundred dollars an hour. And there are those that earn many thousands an hour. Some earn tens of 20,000s an hour. As far as output, maybe not necessarily trading time for money, but output of all the various business activities and stuff like that. And if we allow our subconscious mind to first believe it's possible, we open ourselves up to it. This was the same thing when it came to like bigger ticket consulting deals and stuff like that. I had to first be around other individuals that were able to do it at a higher price point. And then all of a sudden it, it was like, it enabled me to see, oh, this is actually normal. You can you can get a higher fee more so than people will make in like a year in a fee. Like literally here you go, here's this fee, you know, five figures, six figures. And it's like, why didn't, why wasn't I able to think of this before? It's because I was, I didn't have that information that was saying that it is possible. And the truth is you don't really need that information to see it, uh, to realize it's possible. But it does help when you're around somebody that says, oh, it is possible, and they, they have a, an experience that's kind of osmosis type of transference of the state, you can say. However, oh, yeah. we, can, we can actually tap into that in ways beyond without even being in the presence of someone that has that oh, state yeah. transference to us. By, oh, yeah. by doing this one thing that I found to be really useful, and, and maybe you have a practice for this similar, 
is uh, I, I observe where I'm putting limitations in my life, limitations to myself, limitations to others. So uh, Rob, uh, not Robert, but Neville Goddard talks about this in mental conversations, he calls it, you know, the conversations you have with yourself, yep. you know, what to say when you talk to yourself and all that kind of stuff, psycho-cybernetics reveals. And so what I say about another person, what I say about reality, what I say about myself materializes in some shape or form oh, yeah. as proof that what is within is there. And it doesn't mean that it is fact. It just means it is revealing to me what's within. And when I say, if I'm not a fan of what shows up here, I can choose to change within and I'm going to change it to something else. And then boom, it starts to change. Then I do this exciting thing that I have a lot of fun doing is as I navigate reality, I have my phone. I don't do it with a pen and paper. I do it when I do my coaching calls, my consulting calls and stuff on my desk like that. But I'm writing down where my limitations are, where my fears are, doubts, indecisions. And it doesn't, you don't have to overcome them all at once. You just have to make a little commitment to overcome a little of a few of them every day. And then all of a sudden you're starting to get creative ideas that you never thought of before. Like all of a sudden you're going to get a marketing campaign or a business idea or a way of optimizing your business that you might not even have heard from anybody else. You know that? It's like, where does that come from? I believe it comes from infinite intelligence. So let's talk about infinite intelligence. What is your definition of infinite intelligence? Because I would like to share mine, but I want, I want to know your definition. What is this? Infinite intelligence. Yeah, um, I, um, it, it's an unconventional, if, if I were to give it a definition, it would be like an unconventional definition or perception of God, right? Mm -hmm. Something that is all-knowing, all-powerful, all-creative by nature. And I believe that it is attached to the subconscious mind. Yes. So I believe we can draw upon it and impress within it and then receive output. And then I believe whatever is impressed in must, must be manifested outward. But that comes from infinite intelligence. Yeah. So yes, I agree with you. And my, mm -hmm. uh, uh, let's go a little deeper into it. So I, we have our conscious mind, which we're making decisions with. And I believe the conscious mind is to choose and guard the subconscious mind. Yes. Choose the gatekeeper. And, the gatekeeper. Yeah. And be like, go to uh, a, an art gallery and be inspired by it, or go and watch a YouTube channel consciously to see what you want to do as far as business building or whatever you want to apply it for, relationships, to consciously go out and see the kind of people that are available that you might want to meet and, and, and consciously write down the characteristics that you like. So, a lot of this, and then also nurture the subconscious mind. Now, the subconscious mind does the create, like, brings it forth predominantly. Yeah. And, what we want to do is we want to release the grip from the conscious doing and go into the subconscious, which by the way, artists do it, athletes do it in the business world. After a while in entrepreneurship, you, this is, this is, I become more subconscious. Like I show up for a consulting session and I don't have any biases what I'm going to talk about, but it goes really well. But if I have biases, I'm like, I'm going to say this, I'm going to say that it doesn't come out because I'm not allowing my, my experience, my knowledge, my understanding, everything's in my subconscious and even infinite intelligence to express to me in a way that's the greatest service. Okay. So we got a conscious, we got subconscious, and we got infinite intelligence. So infinite intelligence is where we get all these ideas that you never even thought of before, like all kinds of mind blowing things, altered states of consciousness, like wild, wild stuff that I was not open to before, but now I am, and I experience it. And it's just like it's just like I don't even know how to talk to this about people. Like I don't even know, but I but I know it's so like real. But the cool thing is, it's like I go into this world and pull out all these nuggets of creativity and ideas and then share it in the real world. And people are like, that's so great. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I got this from infinite intelligence. Yeah. <laughs> right? So all, all creatives, all uh, athletes, musicians, entrepreneurs, those that are in the space, uh, people who create and manifest in reality, which, by the way, we always all, all, everyone does anyway. So it's not like here's these categories of people. It's just how mindfully do you do it? Um, yes. When the subconscious mind is programmed and cleansed from any kind of disconnect between in this possibility of infinite intelligence and is facilitated to go into infinite intelligence from a place of spirit of harmony, that's like when the magic happens, right? Yeah. It's like yeah. conscious, subconscious, and infinite intelligence. Okay, so consciously we want to be conscious. So let's let's like bring this into like a nice summary. I like you and I could talk for like five, six hours about this stuff and <laughs> easy. And um, I really don't want to uh, get too much into this because you cover all this on your channel. So I want to I want to stimulate this uh, who you are as a person and the realization that I value your stuff 
Thank and you. my audience, I, I recommend, you know, everyone watching this, go check out his channel, watch his videos, because this is an interview. It's kind of like a dynamic energy. You are, you are very much like me, where when I do my own videos, I go into my own state, and then I express in like this, this really, really pure, like non-biased, like boom. And you do that in your videos. So when, when you go over to Joseph's channel, you're going to see this. And the stuff he's going to say, we have to talk about that materializing a person thing, though. That's something we have to talk about, because that's one of your popular videos, right? We'll talk about that before we sign off. But um, the, the, the element of conscious, subconscious, and infinite intelligence. So we want the conscious mind, and, and, and feel free to chime in and, 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 and build upon this, because this is yeah. a philosophy that I've been sharing, but you also have yeah. so much more to contribute to it, this yeah. and build upon it. We have a conscious mind, which is a, we agree upon that. It's like the gatekeeper and the conscious chooser, right? Yep, exactly. <clears throat> then, we, then we got our subconscious mind that does most of the work, like literally yes. 90, 95, maybe even 99%. Yeah, I think 99%. And we have to nurture, protect, and guard the subconscious mind by instilling empowering information and that what is related to what we consciously want to create. And our subconscious mind will do it graciously, willing me, uh, willingly, and in the most interesting ways. You just have to allow it to happen. You can't like go in there and start. Uh, what does that mean to you? Uh, allow yeah, it to no, happen versus going in there and, and messing around that's, with it. What that's you... a beautiful thing. That's a, um, so when I have sessions with people, oftentimes what it's, seems is and this is the same thing that I used to do is micromanaging and continuously imagining um, affirming on a to a degree to which it's almost like a gridlock with where the subconscious can't work essentially because this because the conscious is um, inundating it or really just smothering it and I do also believe that like uh, in addition to what you said which is absolutely correct as far as the state of harmony we all like if, if we because we can believe that we don't have this power and we won't I mean we're, we're always doing it but we won't have that control so if we have beliefs that are limiting as you mentioned earlier then we will limit our creativity we will limit our power which is why it's so important to kind of cleanse like you said oh yeah any type of belief blocking me from getting from from having the most power right and this kind of varies over time as far as how it adapts and what I do is I systematically test okay does this does this seem impossible okay well let's try doing something that would make that make my belief false everything uh, modifying the weather modifying other people's beliefs modifying my beliefs manifesting items and so one after the other systematically removing these blocks and then all of a sudden you have this clear pathway and what I find is that if I can successfully embody the feeling of the wish fulfilled even if just for a moment in a nice condensed accurate full way whether it be through affirming through imagining inner conversation mood then it will impress it's like dropping a seed upon the subconscious mind yeah. which we must let the sunlight hit so it can grow and manifest into fruition and that's kind of relinquishing control after you've done the work wow that, that says so much right there that's worth meditating upon you know <laughs> I call it the lovers within, conscious mind, subconscious oh, yeah. mind, and infinite intelligence is a spirit of harmony, all three. So when the subconscious mind is nurtured like this, when you care for the subconscious mind, you protect and guard the subconscious mind, you heal the subconscious mind. You know, Louise Hay had, uh, you can heal your life. A lot of the best like self-help, personal development, even entrepreneurship, and every, every kind of information like the Bible, all spiritual texts and so forth, um, causes a person to go in and heal parts of them, forgive, let go be at peace is, is laying the foundation for this next, you know, more esoteric concept of infinite intelligence that, by the way, those that are creatives and stuff like, yeah, we know exactly what he's talking about. Like when I'm in flow, like I say flow, even if you don't believe in like infinite intelligence, if you get in flow, you automatically tap into it, right? Like you start to come yeah. up with creative yep, ways absolutely. and stuff. So someone doesn't have to believe in God or infinite intelligence or whatever. You absolutely just, not. You just right. know that when you're in, you're in that flow where it's like, here's what I'm doing. I'm allowing it to go. I'm, I'm doing all the right moves and stuff. It's sometimes it's challenging and I rise up to the challenge. And then all of a sudden these creative ways just start showing up to help you create it. And boom, next thing you know, you've created this and you got to yep. stay in it, right? Like that's the power of this is this. I realized that I, uh, the more I stay in it, the faster the materializations, the greater confidence that I have to create even bigger dreams and they materialize faster. And what I'm the, the fun part, the, the part that I find the most fun is 
the removing of fears, doubts, indecision, limiting thinking, um, negativity, all those kinds of things uh, during the journey. It's like it's almost like the reason why we create a vision and go after it for me is to find those limiting things within myself so I can remove it. And then that's like so you're so lighthearted, you're fun, you're joyous in the world. Like you show up to sales calls. It's not even like oh my gosh, I got to show up to the sales call and I got to put on this act. You're like, look, I've got something that's really valuable for you. I have put in a lot of time, energy, effort to cultivate this. It's something that I believe can benefit you greatly. And I've done my research and stuff like that. And I could be wrong about this, but I like to talk to you about this. Like you bring that kind of energy into a sales conversation versus, uh, say, you know, I'm talking about I have a, 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 like a deep, profound love for entrepreneurship, so my mind always goes there. But you're more likely when you do this to bring that kind of energy versus a scarcity energy. It's like I'm trying to get money out of this person and, and they're trying to prove me wrong. And like it, that weird energy does not create the kind of reality. In fact, it'll bring more about that on. Yeah. So and, we are, and we're kind of like, I, 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 yeah, no, totally. The, I, I think usually, I don't know, once every couple of days, once a day, I will find something that is, so, so I always have desires, right? Always have desires, but the process in the middle winds me up or, or I find myself finding things to clear out kind of how you said, I don't know how to articulate that better, yeah. but, um, what I often do and I love doing this is and for me, I usually do a pen and a piece of paper and I'll just stream of consciousness write down if I find something that I dislike or something that needs to be removed or something, I'll just stream of consciousness kind of write down numerous things which imply that whatever it was that was bothering me is long gone but yet the opposite exists, something in an awesome manner. And I'll just go one after the other, boom, 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 10, 20, 30 different things. And the process itself of constructing different phrases, now always in the present tense though, like I am, I have, I immediately, you'll find yourself sometimes in a, the next day experiencing that, that whatever it was, that fear, doubt, insecurity, jealousy, whatever mood is gone. And the whole world, not even just I am acting differently, but the whole world is also acting, meeting me halfway. Yeah, that's amazing, right? It's like, it's wow. It's so epic. And Gandhi was right. You know, do the change, be the change within. So one more thing, the most popular video on your channel is materializing a person, a specific person. Did you materialize me? Uh, I, I think we both <laughs> materialized each other, man, to be honest. I yeah, like, about I, I always, I, my, my, one of my affirmations is I, I meet, I hang out with cool people that are uplifting, inspiring, stimulating, and everyone in my life is like that. So yes, I materialized you, but how do you, what's your take on that? Materializing a specific, like literally a one person, right? Yeah, one um, person. How do you materialize a specific oh, person? Okay. Okay. Long story short. Yeah. So you've got, when I want to manifest a general person, then whatever the criteria I specify, there will, pro there will probably be 10,000, 100,000 people that can meet that criteria. So it's a simple, simple process if you know how to manifest, which is not difficult at all. But if you have a single person, like a specific name that you want, now you've got one person that needs to move through a variety of different states to be the person that you want them to be. So, um, that's what we're all moving through, I believe, is states, states of consciousness, different, yeah. almost like levels where we're just going through happiness, sadness, wealth, living in San Diego, living in Canada, whatever the case may be. But so you choose a specific person and you hold them in the state that you want them to be and um, with care and respect and love and whatever. But that person will begin to move from state to state through city to city, and then eventually end up as the person that you desire them to be. That's how I materialized it, my girlfriend. <laughs> that's, how, that's, that's how you did it. Wow. And it's definitely possible. I've seen it happen time and time again. I've done it before. And um, it's an interesting thing. <laughs> and, you learn a lot. and it's interesting because like when you, when that was the first video I looked at your channel and it really was like, oh, this guy knows his stuff because I thought about it before because I did do it. I just didn't put emphasis on it. And I'm always like trying to help my clients, whatever, do that kind of thing again. And I believe everything we shared in this video and what you share in your channel helps facilitate all that and Napoleon Hill stuff and power of subconscious mind, Joseph Murphy, Neville Goddard and so forth, because I have the opportunity to do stuff. Like before I didn't know who Jay, uh, Jay Abraham was and then I watched some program with Evan Pagan and he was talking about Jay Abraham, greatest marketing genius in the world. I'm like, one day I'm going to, I'm going to meet him and so forth. And I do stuff with the Abraham group now. And it's like, 
It's like, whoa, that happened. Evan Pagan and I, uh, I met him like a whole handful of times. All these people that I've been wanting to meet, and the list goes on. I, I, there's, there's a whole bunch. But I knew that one day that I was going to meet him, and I felt that feeling, and it ended up happening. And so uh, the feeling of faith and confidence and belief in that is one of the key elements. So that's really cool, which goes to show you there's so much to the power of the mind that we're just beginning to understand. <laughs> And oh, I'm yeah. so happy that you have your YouTube channel. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to bring you on there is because I want to bring awareness on your YouTube channel. I want to bring awareness on uh, alternative ways of creating reality. For me, mainly through entrepreneurship, because I believe entrepreneurship is something where you can create a lot of benefit for others. You can benefit your life. And entrepreneurship was my, as you believe, you can say my story of how I created the, the, you know, the amazing life that I live right now. Yeah. And it's a way. It doesn't sound, it's not the, the only way. So... Uh, but the essence, the essence of what I'm getting at is being shared in your channel and other great channels that, that I follow as well. And we live in a very beautiful time right now because we have YouTube. Literally, anybody can just jump on and share and express. And they will materialize the people that want to hear it. And the people that want to hear it will materialize that person who creates yes. the content. So people materialize you. And that's one of your channel. Uh, channel. And this goes into like, even if you want to look at it from a, more of a direct response marketing perspective, like another layer that I look at it from is like, uh, you created something that was needed and useful. You felt, you, you tuned into the marketplace. The marketplace says, create this. You tuned into it. Boom, you created that. You offered that service. And the marketplace reciprocates, right? Yep. So yep. you can look at this from multiple levels and it's still the same thing. You become what you think about. Yep, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that that's just long story short. It always seems that the spiritual has perfect application in reality every time. Like the true spiritual nuggets, the simplicity of whatever it is that we're talking about always has its... A it's simple analog or dynamic in, in, or manifestation in reality. So yeah. And, and thanks for the compliments on my channel, man. Oh, you're welcome. You know, one, one of the things, vouch for your character, because we had a couple of conversations. One of the things I love about Joseph is, uh, we're very open-minded. Like we don't judge people. We're like, oh, that's our way of doing things. That's cool. Um, we understand because, because you can always track back how a person gets to where they are by observing their thinking and how they feel about reality. And they're right from their perspective, right? Because they created their reality based on it and so forth. And, and I'm opening and embracing and we can learn from people. So the, the, the thing that I like about you and I'm happy to announce you to my subscribers is that you're an insatiable learner. You practice, you take action on it, you apply, you share so graciously on your channel. Your, your audience just loves you and respectfully so because of what you do, like how you navigate reality. And a lot of this is a testament of the work that you've been doing on your subconscious mind. So you're a testament of uh, what you do on your subconscious mind. And the sky's the limits for you, by the way. You're just going to keep growing. Like this is this is you're in this for the long haul, right? You love oh, this. Oh, definitely. Stuff. Yeah, I love that. This is just what I do. You know, it's just what I do. I just want you to listen. We have I just a lot want of fun, people right? to listen. Yeah. And yes, dude, thank you so much for your compliments, man. I and and I just wanted to say specifically that in and this was a couple of years ago when you released that video on um, the power of your subconscious mind, right? That was probably two years ago, three years ago, or something like that. And um and yeah, I, I remembered you from then because you have a um, I was like any and you yeah you stuck in my memory. And so when I uh, sent you this email recently. It wasn't that I was just browsing the internet and typed in anything. It was that you popped in my head and then I typed in your name and I saw that you had done a Neville Goddard yeah. uh, book, I believe. And so um, you definitely stuck stuck in my mind and thank you because then that was an integral part of literally still because Joseph Murphy, I was on for probably two years before I got to Neville Goddard. And so that was definitely very helpful to me. And, and um, thank you very much, man. I really appreciate it. I love this type of uh, conversation. Yeah, you know, it's that's awesome. what's fun. I love we do it this way because even the, the term interview, I was kind of like, ah, I just want to hang out with him on the phone and talk like how we normally talk because we talk like this right we're talking i'm just like we, we these, yeah. these are the best kind of conversations because they're subconscious based right they just flow out of it and we just we just allow ourselves to be because we accept ourselves for who we are and that's one of the things about the power of the subconscious mind you gotta you gotta accept yourself you gotta love yourself you gotta have and you can call you can constantly keep raising it up you know louise hay put out good work on that uh six pillars of self-esteem but nathaniel brandon was really helpful for that i did a lot of things to accept myself you know over the years and that's a large part of releasing that grip I, I believe a lot of times when people try to control 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 it's because they don't have like a faith and trust in themselves it's not the only reason but that that's one of the reasons that i found for me i so, wholeheartedly agree so everybody watching this video check out joseph's uh, channel this has been a very, very laid-back conversation and stuff he obviously you share your story which we didn't even get into um very fascinating story check out in your intro video on your channel right 
that is a, a brief piece of my story. And then the other piece is on my 10,000 subscribers video, which is like my story. I think it says something like that. Yeah. Which is a really fascinating story. We've talked about it. So go over to his channel, check out the videos. I'll put a link in the description for his uh, channel. I will also put a link in the description for the video that I did, which I had, I'm going to, I'm going to not did, but I'm, by the time this video is released, it would have been done. And uh, I'm, I'm in excited. the process of creating. You like that? I'm excited. Yeah, idea. I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of those things. I'm like, let's, let's figure out, do something together. And it just kind of came up. I just, we just allowed the subconscious to flow. So the, the, what, what came from that was I'm going to take your content and what I believe is, is a kind of turn it into a process of the, the Joseph ally manifestation method, you know, and then put it in a video and, and, and give it to your audience as a gift. And, uh, and then potentially that can turn into something where you can build and evolve it into your programs and code. You have, uh, online programs and stuff like that. Um, so I do workshops. Um, I do just starting to kind of experiment and, and find my, um, what's working best, but I do just sessions right now and workshops, but hopefully that'll build into membership and course and all that kind of good stuff. So yeah, it's, Soon. it's a natural progression. We live in a beautiful time right now. This just evolves and, you know, I do a lot of things because once you con con cultivate the uh, abundance consciousness and the entrepreneur consciousness or whatever, to be able to, to find opportunities where others see obstacles and just create and manifest in reality and turn into something that will bring you money or whatever, anything you touch turns to gold. So it's kind of, oh, yeah. for me, the YouTube channel was something I just created for fun and then it turned into something and then now it turns into this and it turns into that. And that's the beautiful thing about uh, being on this journey of not just an entrepreneur, but like just a creator, right? It's like you create one thing and the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. Love it. And it's funny that that quote, you just said, everything you touch turns to gold. That was one of my affirmations for a long, long, many years. So that's funny. All right. Well, thank you very much for, uh, you know, putting some time together so that you can jump on and share with my audience. And thanks really for having me, man. And uh, encourage everyone to go over to Joseph's channel and check out his stuff and use this stuff because this stuff's really powerful. It's been really helpful for me and it's helpful for you and helpful for your audience. And I want everyone to benefit from this and uh, co create really amazing experiences. So thank you. Check out the links in the description. Thank you very much, Joseph. I appreciate you. I'm looking forward to connecting and, and having more of these conversations and stuff. I always get so elevated when I have this conversation with you. Because oh, yeah. Because it's exciting oh, yeah. stuff, right? What, what to to us is like what's what's more important about creating your dreams, you know? Like that's like that's like where my where my passion comes in is that's like talking it. about because all dreams are possible. Like you created. I mean, one thing, uh, and I want to I want to ask you one final thought on this because people always like, is it about the dream or is it about the journey? Is it about, it's about both? Like I love the journey and the destination. It's like, can you tell me which one's better? I can't. I honestly cannot. Like I embrace both. I love the journey, and I believe that's the power right there. You gotta have fun with this stuff. You gotta create, and you'll create, and then you go next level, next level, next level. And life's exactly. a beautiful, like life's a literally a trip, right? It's just like this, yeah. It's like this long trip, and you're like, whoa, right? <laughs> you enjoy the journey, you enjoy the destination, then you enjoy the next journey and the next destination, and just ad infinitum. I, I really believe that as well. All right, <laughs> sounds good, Joseph. We'll talk soon. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Take bye, care, bye. Joseph. Take care. Bye.